It is now time for members' statements. The member from Perth, Wellington. Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker. Today, I'm pleased to recognize the Science Hill Drifters. The Science Hill Drifters are a snowmobile club based out of St. Mary's, Ontario. Back in February, the Science Hill Drifters organized an event in an attempt to break the Guinness World Record for the most snowmobiles in a parade. The record they needed to beat was 820 machines. Two weeks ago, the Science Hill Drifters received the exciting news that they had officially set the new world record. They managed to organize a remarkable 847 snowmobiles. That's quite an accomplishment for a 26-member club. I would like to congratulate the Science Hill Drifters, including the event organizer, Dwayne Lawrence. I know this took a lot of work to organize and even more time and energy to, to submit the evidence to be eligible for the record title. I would also like to recognize everyone who took part in the parade. People came from all over to support the Drifters and be part of this event. Again, congratulations to the new Guinness World Record holders. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, a Government of, of Ontario Progress report from 2011 reads as follows. In 2003, classrooms were crowded, schools were crumbling, and teacher unrest was hurting our children and grandchildren. Our students lost too many teaching days to strikes and unrest, and that chaos drew too much attention away from their learning. Private school enrollment was on the rise as parents lost confidence in our publicly funded schools. That statement was from a government that touted itself as a self-proclaimed champion of smaller class sizes. It was a government that promised not to cut funding for education and limit classroom supports Ontario families want and their children deserve. Today, this is a Liberal government that slashes funding for special education, forces the closure of our good neighbourhood schools, and makes across-the-board cuts to education. It's a government that flip-flops on its class size commitments and thinks it knows better than the professionals who educate our children. Speaker, I don't like to speculate what the future will bring, but I took the liberty of writing a future progress report. It reads as follows. In 2015, classrooms were crowded. Good neighbourhood schools were being shut down and labour unrest was hurting our children and grandchildren. Our students lost too many teaching days and liberal cuts to education were throwing our schools into chaos. While parents were losing confidence in our publicly funded education system, they knew that new Democrats were standing up for Ontario families and holding this government to account. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to tell you about an exciting and inspiring event held recently in my riding. On May 4th, I attended the third annual Pythons Pit event. Presented by sponsors MNP and RBC Royal Bank, Pythons Pit provides a forum for creative entrepreneurial residents and students of Halton to pitch new products or business ideas to a panel of investors and business moguls, or Pythons, from the local community. This local spin-off of the Dragon's Den is similar in many ways to the TV hit show, but differs in that contestants receive months of mentorship and invaluable access to business professionals. Python's Pit is a collaboration of all the Rotary Clubs across the Halton region, with tremendous support from the community and local businesses as well. Mentorship defines Python's Pit. All through the process, mentors are made available to help participants hone their business skills, including developing their value proposition and refining their pitch. Contestants enter the pit in two categories, the open categories for entrepreneurs with a pot of $20,000 and the high school category where young entrepreneurs pitch for a cash pool of $5,000. On the night of the event, the high school contestants pitch their ideas to the Pythons live on stage at the Burlington Performing Arts Centre. The winners were four senior students from Nelson High School who engineered a mobile application that will facilitate a more organized and systematic coffee run experience. I want to congratulate Fareen Samji and Tom McLeod, the chairs and community business leaders who led a great team of volunteers for not only a great event but for contributing to what I'm sure is a life-changing experience for these awesome entrepreneurs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member from Oxford. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise to recognize every everyone who has contributed to a new cheese-themed playground in the town of Ingersoll. This playground was built as part of the popular TVO Kids series, Giver, which teaches kids about citizen engagement by providing them with opportunities to see how their good intentions, combined with hard work, can benefit an entire community. Everyone can tune in to TVO at 6.30 tonight or at the screening party hosted at the Fusion Youth Centre in Ingersoll and watch how Ingersoll's cheese-themed playground came to life. 
The playground is the result of the hard work of six kids from Ingersoll and more than 120 volunteers that helped them. This is truly a community project with contributions from the Town of Ingersoll, Playwright Committee, Sinking Ship Entertainment, Amico Infrastructures Incorporated, who contributed to excavating services, and Alan Lumber donating all the wood. And it celebrates our proud cheese and dairy industry history in Ingersoll. I want to thank TVO for choosing Ingersoll. To date, the Giver Series has dedicated volunteers have, and dedicated volunteers have constructed 33 new playgrounds throughout Ontario that will provide a legacy for new community facilities for generations to enjoy. I want to commend everyone who was involved in creating this great playground for children in Ingersoll, and I hope that everyone will take the time to tune in to TVO tonight and join, and join TVO Kids Community Volunteers, the Ontario Parks Association, and the Sinking Ship Entertainment to celebrate the construction of the special screening event. And thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Niagara Falls. Mr. Speaker, thank you for allowing me to speak today. I'm happy to say we had the Premier of Quebec here who gave an excellent speech this morning. I'm happy he was here so I can illustrate a point. The Premier of Quebec's promise is one of five promises in this country that currently regulate gas prices in some way. Though they all do it differently, they are regulated in place which help to stabilize the market and in some cases protect the consumer against unnecessary high gasoline prices. In my riding in Niagara this weekend, gas prices rose 14 cents a litre without any large change in the price of oil. That's around 56 cents a gallon increase. Oil prices since the start of this year have not increased substantially. We enjoyed paying 85 cents a litre then, yet gasoline prices have steadily climbed since then, and now we're paying $1.13, an increase of over 30%. People are having a high, hard time covering these bills. Everywhere they look in Ontario, gasoline, hydro, food prices, everything is rising. This government needs to take a serious look into the price of gasoline. If other provinces have turned to regulating their gas markets, why wouldn't we at least talk about it? If oil prices are dropping, then we may have an opportunity to make sure people can drive to work for less and have a few extra bucks in their pocket to spend in their communities. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Rise in the House today to pay tribute to a trailblazer who raised public awareness for people with disabilities, Ellen Anderson. As members of this House are aware, Ellen Anderson, former Toronto Star Life section editor and disabilities columnist, passed away on Saturday, April 11. Henderson began her career at the Star as a business reporter in the 1970s. While beginning her journalism career, she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, which led her to pitch a disability column to the Star, focusing on information and advocacy. Reflecting on her career, she was able to connect with the grassroots issues and put them into the mainstream, shining a much-needed light on disability issues. After retiring from the Star, she serves as the chair of the Centre for Independent Living Toronto, an organization that provides people with disabilities education to gain independent life skills to facilitate integration into the larger community. To end, I would like to use the same Neil Marcus quote that Ellen Henderson concluded her Ryerson TED Talk with, disabilities is not a brave struggle or courage in the face of adversity. Disability is an art. It's an ingenious way to live. This is the message of Ellen Anderson's lifetime work, and this must be the same message we continue to communicate to make Ontario more accessible. Merci. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, in spite of the current uncertainty in our schools in Ontario, last Monday was a momentous day for education in the community of Rockwood in Wellington Halton Hills. That morning, the groundbreaking of the new Sacred Heart Catholic Elementary School took place, and in the evening, the official opening of a Cole Harris Mill Public School was celebrated, both in Rockwood. A Cole Harris Mill Public School, which first opened its doors to students this past September, is a dual-track school with both English and French immersion from JK to grade 5. And when it opens its doors in September 2016, Sacred Heart Catholic Elementary School will be home to over 270 students from JK to grade 8. 
It will become the first new school to open in the Wellington Catholic District School Board since 2010. With a safe and inspiring teaching and learning environment, I know that students at both these schools will receive an outstanding educational experience leading to achievement and success. I've always believed that learning is lifelong and that our teachers are caring, dedicated professionals. With the positive support of parents, community and government working together in the best interests of our students, our schools are second to none in Canada. And as the Member of Provincial Parliament for Wellington Halton Hills, I want to extend my sincere thanks and congratulations to the Upper Grand District School Board, the Wellington Catholic District School Board, as well as all the parents, students, teachers and staff who are involved in these new schools. Together, we can work to give our students the finest education possible. We owe them nothing less. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is a pleasure to recognize my constituents, Tui Fam and Rosemary Childer House, and representatives of Hypertension Canada, who are at Queen's Park to share their expertise on Vascular Health Day. Hypertension or high blood pressure affects 20% of Canadians and will affect 90% of those who live a normal lifespan if we ignore the condition. In our fast-paced, stressful lives, it is important that each of us be aware of the risk associated with the condition, including heart, kidney, cerebrovascular disease, and even dementia. Having no obvious symptoms, it can be a silent killer, and it is a leading cause of death and disability. The work of Hypertension Canada includes recommending evidence-based clinical treatments and education materials. Early detection is important to reduce its harmful impacts. Today, many of my colleagues had the opportunity to join Hypertension Canada and their partner, Valiant Canada, in room 228 to learn more about vascular health. I would like to thank Hypertension Canada and Valiant for the work they are doing, and I encourage Ontarians to have their blood pressure checked at a clinic, pharmacy, or by their doctor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.